you know, this, this could be anywhere, it's Times Square, it could be in any major city where there's a lot of traffic. And the idea of sort of text and content in the hands of commercial people and text and content in the hands of artists. Uh, Jenny Holzer piece here from her Truism series. And the idea, perhaps inevitable now, as we think about it, that the surface of a building, of a tall building in particular, would become important, maybe as important for what it could contain in a world of global text and marketing as, in fact, what's inside the building. And this, these ideas sort of begin to come out of the commercial and, I think, the art world together. Next. Doug Aitken's um, installation at the Museum of Modern Art in, I believe it was January and February of 2007, where it had these uh, moving images and stories mounted on the surface of the building, again, using a building surface, not a tall building, but a building surface, uh, as a way to express narrative. Next. And then his Manhattan Air Rights series, uh, in which he says, well, if every building could be built to maximum FAR, I think, uh, I think this is part of Madison Avenue. Oh, this is Lexington. You know, he did an image of what it would be, how tall, you know, how much surface you would have. And then he did another image, I think the final image is there. And, you know, this looks at what it would be. And you can imagine if text was value or if there was commercial value placed on uh, content, kind of how that would remake the city in that, in that world. I, I mentioned it in one of my classes of maybe two years ago at USC, we did a downtown studio at our major arena where we get a lot of traffic in downtown. It's called Staples Arena. It's where the LA Lakers play, by the way. And um, we discovered, I had students mapping the neighborhood for several blocks around it. And we mapped with respect to different things and it was interesting, but the two things we discovered, um, one of them probably wouldn't be surprising in New York, was that the vast majority of people or entities which owned property in downtown Los Angeles were not registered in the state of California. So they really weren't residents, they weren't neighbors, they were investment units from other places. Uh, the other thing we noticed, which is interesting, is within two blocks of the Staples Arena, which has high traffic, um, the value of the surface of the wall of tall buildings was more valuable than the net rentable space inside the space. <laughs> You know, Clear Channel and various markets would want the outside of the building. And there's a rather enormous war. I'm not up to date on how it is in New York or if it is, but in Los Angeles, there's a huge war between uh, if I'm a tenant inside a building and my landlord puts a huge sign over it, do I have rights or do I not have rights? The, uh, the uh, uh, state of California right now and some of the representatives are basically filing suit to say that LED-based digital screens are dangerous and they're a traffic hazard. And so there's suits there, so we're kind of in a lock right now in California. Uh, I'm not sure, we, I guess we lead in entertainment, I think we maybe lead in advertising content too, and digital screens and all that. But all that's being challenged in the courts right now, which is very interesting. So I, I say that proximate to, to those images. And I'm going to end very briefly, just so we don't think theory is over here and design is over there, on a very quick series of few buildings which we have done and are doing now in the office. And I think, in my mind, they very much relate to the themes that are in the book. This material is not in the book, but I, want, I always like to tie um, kind of theoretical ideas to actually the making of architecture. So, if we go to the next images. This is our recent headquarters for Metro Goldwyn Mayor, MGM, in Century City. And this is really about many things, but the point I wanted to make vis-a-vis -vis the earlier conversations is the idea of the highly engineered curtain wall. It's kind of how explicit and how interesting the curtain wall hopefully can become. Uh, the ideas of high performance finishes, the idea of a, uh, a skin which maybe is not static, but is actually kinetic, it actually has biases to it, has patterns in it, has different levels of reflectivity and density and coatings, as well as surfaces and frames and all of that, because this was really, I was really very interested in getting a highly dynamic skin rather than something that was static. This is the ground level where glass is hung rather than supported in normal gravity uh, protocols. And so this is, technology is clearly one of the things that we're very interested in in tall buildings. Next. Next. There was a little <laughs> animated piece in here. Yeah. It's playable all right. I, I'd sell for that. That was just good. <laughs> uh -oh. Oh, uh -huh. Can you go back one, or is there yeah, anything yeah. there? 
It's a building we're doing at the corner of Sunset and Gower. It's a series of two tall buildings. There it is. Behind, there, behind an historic building by William Lascaz, an architect that was based here in New York. Worked for CBS, particularly notably, and this was the first radio, live radio headquarters. And we're looking at it with respect to signage, moving signage, and in, in, embedding it in the skin of the building. It's kind of one of the 100% corners. There are a couple of important places in Hollywood which is very uh, historically uh, related to entertainment. This would be one of those. Sunset and Hollywood Boulevard really are the two principal arteries. Next. The idea of content. This, and this would not be surprising in a city like Tokyo or other places, certainly places, some places in China. This is a project we're doing in the historic district of, of uh, uh, Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles, 426 Spring Street. And it actually, uh, I say this was surprising in Los Angeles, it's unique there, but actually this ground level entry and retail and food, there's parking that's both below grade and above grade. There's an express lobby here. There's social space and food here. There is um, a hotel, a boutique hotel, the place that the building bends back and then it breaks again up to condominiums on the top. So it is an elaborated, vertically mixed-use project, which is really kind of a unique thing, particularly in Los Angeles. See all the various floor plans but it's there. This is a project that we're doing in Dallas. This happens to be uh, the major parkway in downtown. That's Victory here. This is historic downtown. These are all the buildings in the Arts District. This is our site. This is Dallas Museum of Arts. This is Renzo Piano's Nasher. This is uh, the uh, Meyerson by I Am Pay, Paycock Free. This is Norman Foster's new opera. This is Wiley by Oma. And these are all mid-rise buildings. Ours is a tall residential building. Next. And in reviewing all those buildings, they all seem to be about kind of modern, uh, late modern sculpture, you know, platonic solids, and that whole period of sculpture, and all the buildings in some ways by the architects they've used. They've taken these ideas and really bent them and used them in the elaboration of their architecture. So we wanted to do the same thing in a slightly different way. So we took a form which had not been used, and we took an oval. Hard maybe to see from here, but in plan it's an oval, and actually in elevation it's a very broad oval. So this kid is actually bowing in this direction, as well as being an oval and plan, and then doing it in a series of different prismatic glasses that would allow it by day uh, to have different levels of density and transparency. By night, it would inherently happen, because we could have a lantern that would show light in different levels through different transparencies from the inside to the outside. Next. Next. And the last building is a building we're working on in Osaka, Japan. Uh, a very lively, interesting, highly industrialized, very dense city, really a second city to Tokyo. And uh, what's, what we love about this building, next, is that in pursuit of, after doing so many single-use tall buildings, we have a lobby here, we have food and clubs here, we have office space here, we have a spa fitness center here. We have express uh, lobby here, sky lobby. We have uh, the hotel here. We have another sky lobby. And we have residences and we have a restaurant on the top. And this is fairly normal thinking there, but within the context of the mechanics of building projects, uh, the, the elaboration of separate circulation, the idea of the needs for each of these floor plates and, and optimizing that throughout the whole building. It's quite a feat in, uh, in the United States to get a commission like that, to find a developer who wants to do that, for whom the, all the stars line up to build that. Next, I think there's one last little animation of that. It's a highly figured building. It's very fractal because they're very different floor plate sizes that are required as we go up through that section. I think that's the last slide. Thank you very much.